Is that an R or is it A? The first letter. And then O. This one would be the So if I didn't have any other soul, then you can keep me. I don't have any soul. Okay. Thank you. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so that the stuff is just there, and you can just read it from there. <laughs> and if you want, you can get uh, you can get also these two later for uh, walking around. And then you can use it. I mean, if you, or you can pick it up. Is it on? Yeah. Just, just, just. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Woo! So, everybody's here to write one page of the Blender manual each. <laughs> That's. That's good. I mean, like, there are like a mm, few hundred pages, so like it's not really one, it's like maybe ten each, but still doable. I mean, right now I'm trying, you know, to sort them one by one by myself. It's not uh, so easy. But anyway, it's very good to see many people here. And um, so we are going to talk about uh, what we've been up to in the last few months uh, regarding the uh, Blender documentation uh, topics. Um, 
So this is uh, pretty much what we are going to uh, talk about in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, because we would like to leave like uh, at least like five minutes to, to discuss, to see if there is some feedback uh, from you guys here um, on how we can make this uh, progress further. So we're going to go over what's the current status of the documentation in general, what that even means. Uh, we are going to have our take on uh, the user manual, which is like the, the focus uh, at the moment of what we are working on, and uh, how we developed uh, and, and what consists of uh, our proposal to improve that. And uh, then we are going to highlight the next steps, what, what we, what we want to do next, and then we can talk about it. Um, so currently, so what is the documentation? So wh where people find information on how Blender works and uh, when, when they need something? Um, Probably this list is not uh, going to be very complete, but you know uh, everybody knows that there is a wiki.blender.org, which is supposed to be the official place where the official uh, manual of Blender is. Uh, there is a Stack Exchange site that has been raising in popularity over the last two years. It exists already. Yeah. Yeah. So like. It's it's very it's a very uh, efficient way to to ask questions and get answers. It's a proven working model uh, from other examples like Stack Overflow, and it's it has a very active community behind it. And there are also developers on it, so like you get Campbell to answer your questions if uh, no one else can. <laughs> but, but he'd rather not. But. Um, and uh, there are, of course, several uh, free and commercial training websites uh, that mostly provide uh, video tutorials. But you can consider that documentation too. Um, but these are mainly, like, really the places uh, uh, where, where stuff is going on. And uh, it's good to see a lot of uh, independent uh, efforts. It's also a great business opportunity to have this, uh, this uh, kind of websites around because it's, it's good. Um, but Blender should provide something itself. There should be a way, like a good centralized community, uh, uh, community driven documentation project. Um, it's, it's really important. Um, so, and that's the wiki. That's what the wiki is, in theory. And uh, the wiki, though, has some issues. And uh, uh, I mean, the wiki basically tries to do too many things because it hosts the user manual, which is uh, in you know Blender 2.4, 2.5, half of it or something. Then the other half has been moved to 2.6, and uh, all this in around 30 languages. And you can imagine that not all of them are consistent. There are some wikis, like sometimes I browse to check commits and what the status is, and you see like the the German community or the French, uh, the French version of the wiki, the Japanese version of the wiki, it's, it's amazing, like, they translate everything. We changed the layout at some point, and they updated the layout without, like, saying even anything, and that's one of the things I'm going to talk about later as well. Um, so it's, it's a lot of information in a lot of different versions. Uh, the wiki also hosts the official development docs, so, like, a release roadmap or the module owners table that, uh, for some reason, has a little bug and is very hard to edit even. <laughs> When somebody has to change the table, it's always like despair. And uh, uh, personal pages, so you can have your own space on, on the wiki. So if you don't have your own website, who doesn't these days? Um, you can, uh, you know, put a little rom roadmap there, or you have a project proposal, you want to have a review of a document, you just, you just paste it there. And uh, so there is a lot of also random scattered stuff that is there, like somebody made a page and it's just sitting there. And uh, more specifically, the wiki also has uh, uh, very irregular uh, user manual updates. So now we start to uh, think a bit more like really about the manual itself. And these updates are very regular. There, there is not a strong community behind it. There are uh, very, there are a few people sometimes pop up and say, yeah, hey, I would like to help. I'm interested in updating these pages. Uh, how can I do? And then like we help them, point them in the right direction, and somebody does the edits, and then that's it because you can't ask someone to edit the whole wiki, of course. And uh, the silent, and IRC, silent IRC and uh, mailing list channels, that's, uh, that's exactly the thing. Like sometimes, you know, there is an IRC channel, there is a BF Dockboard official mailing list hosted on the Blender.org project, but not many people even know that stuff exists. Uh, like Blender Coders has like 200 uh, people uh, logged in. Uh, in average, all the time, with like 10, 20 people talking, and uh, the, the documentation has like maybe 10, 8, 5, 1. 
not like <laughs> very exciting sometimes. And uh, then there is something that uh, just when I was sitting making this presentation, somebody was uh, asking me, hey, are you working on the wiki? Because uh, I have this problem on the phone. The, the wiki is not very responsive. It doesn't work very well. And probably somebody else noticed this problem. Has anyone been on the wiki with a mobile phone? Uh, a few, okay. And, and you love it like, like this, right? <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> and it's like this for, uh, for a couple of years already, but there are reasons why this is not super easy to fix. And uh, we, we, we are working on it, but it's, you know, it's mainly because the, the wiki software itself has, is, a, is a bit uh, outdated and it's difficult to upgrade, and we can't just throw away the theme that we have because we built a lot of custom templates on top of it, so like all the navigation, all the structure there is. You know, a wiki is meant to be flat. It's meant to be like Wikipedia. That's why MediaWiki was, was designed originally, or at least, I mean, that's, that's what a wiki is, the, the concept of a wiki is. And we have a lot of nested documents, a lot of subsections, and all that type of navigation was made by us, and it's easy to uh, port on, a, on the default template that now is actually responsive. But we have a proposal, and I'm now, uh, I'm going to let Campbell uh, say something about it, and uh, yeah. Okay. Do I have other dot points? Like yeah. Okay. Good just stuff. Press the space bar, and they will appear. Okay. Um, yeah. So I should just. I'd like to add. Like the wiki actually works pretty well for some stuff. So it's not like it's a complete failure. It works really well for document uh, for developer document documentation, like isolated pages about how to build on different operating systems. So it actually serves a purpose pretty well, but for some reason the user manual is this difficult thing. Um, so, our proposal is to migrate to Sphinx and RST, or restructured text, and this is what's used by uh, the Python project. Um, we actually use it already for the Blender reference um, manual for all the Python API documentation, and in a way, I'm not fixed on this being a thing that we have to do, as in maybe Markdown and something else is, is better, but um, the proposal is to migrate to a system that we can, uh, that's responsive and that you can, I guess, maintain as, like, as a project in a bit more like code. Um, because we've seen that a group of people can get together and maintain code, but the wiki, it seems to be very... Uh, Someone comes along, makes an edit, half finishes something and, and leaves, and there's no repercussions, or if they delete half of someone else's post from the week before, the other person isn't notified and it just goes on. There's, there's almost like no sense of like quality or ownership, and this is a problem, I think. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a sort of pros and cons with this. Um, we don't pretend that a technical solution is going to solve this social problem of people attempting to maintain documentation together, but there's some inherent pros and cons. So um, one of them, which is, I guess, all the developers like, is local editing. You can grep the documentation. You can, uh, you can rebuild really quickly. You can edit quickly. You can visualize quickly. In Australia, where I live, it is really, really slow to edit the wiki. Sometimes I lose edits. Um, that's a problem. Um, it's kind of nice. You can do PDF output or EPUB. It's like a nice extra. Um, yeah, uh, downloading the documentation is pretty nice. You can have like a each Blender release has a has a download, a zip download for all the HTML which can be searched. Um, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess it just suits having a, a, a single document that is well structured quite well, whereas a wiki is lots and lots of isolated documents, it's sort of a different model. Oh yeah, and for technical people, you can yank it all into Python and see an abstract syntax tree of all this Python stuff and move it around, that's kind of cool. But it has practical benefits too, because it means we can load in the documentation and m manipulate it. Uh, So yeah, so moving to this, as I mentioned, doesn't actually solve all our problems. We've got other, other issues crop up. So MediaWiki is actually pretty nice and people are used to using it. Um, and even if you don't like MediaWiki, maybe you like Markdown or one of the other myriad uh, Markdown formats or markup formats. It isn't WYSIWYG. People really like WYSIWYG. You know, what you see is what you get. You can see like a word processor. Um, so we don't have that, although we'll show you something later that helps a bit. 
and multiple languages. Now we can make this like a like branching software. You can have different branches for each language and manage that so it's not like uh, insurpassable, but it's, it's an issue. We still need to figure out how exactly to do that. And uh, media storage, if we're using Git, uh, we have issues storing large binary files. We may move to SVN or something else, but that's still an open topic. Okay, Francesco. Yeah, well, um, you can uh, basically, well, maybe this even works like here. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Um, so this is uh, what we did so far. So we were like talking about this and we were like, okay, what are we gonna do about it? Are we gonna like cry in a corner, uh, extract all the wiki content that is in media wiki syntax and parse it and convert it into RST uh, documentation and uh, hook it up to a nice looking team and try to give you some structure and put it online and make a talk at the Blender conference, try to get people uh, interested in it. And that's what we did. Um, yeah. And uh, so here you can have a, a preview, an example of, uh, I mean, this is, this is how, the, how the system looks like uh, currently. So uh, we are using a, a quite popular uh, um, theme for Sphinx that is provided by Read the Docs. If uh, somebody develops software, they might have seen this theme uh, around already. And uh, we, we ported it uh, as, a, as a proof of concept just to show how, how it would work. And uh, it's looking pretty nice. And, uh, I mean, this is just you know the walls of text that need to be edited and changed, and uh, there is uh, support for uh, for a media embedding, so you can have uh, uh, YouTube videos or Vimeo videos uh, images uh, work nicely, and uh, it even like you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's true. Yeah. Let's let's even try something bold, like to search inside of it. Is it yeah, is it? There you go. So like it, it kind of finds stuff within itself already, besides the fact that of course, being nice static and very fast documents, this is very easy to index for Google, so it gets nicer rankings. So instead of when you're searching for something right now in Blender manual, you end up finding those static pages about Blender 2.3. I don't know if somebody ever has, but the idea is that making these good pages, uh, the, uh, uh, crawlers are gonna be very happy about it. So here you can see the cycle stock, which was really like uh, manually uh, ported. Maybe this is not the best page ever. But uh, I mean, this, this is just you know, a proof of concept of how things are supposed to, to work. And what I was trying to do, uh, actually, was to show how the thing is actually working on a thin screen. Yay, this is a thin phone format, and you can still browse it. And if you want to get your navigation, you can click and you get your navigation. So this is something that uh, everybody was asking for, and uh, in theory, we got it. Um, besides this, now I, I think I put the slides of the thing here, okay? So let's go back to this. And uh, a quick uh, word about the workflows. Uh, maybe from Campbell, if you want to yeah. If you want to go over them very briefly. Um, about just the, at the moment? What, yeah, yeah, just what, what has been done now. Yeah. Okay, so at the moment, this is a typical uh, Sphinx project. You can get the source code. We've got a project page. Um, it has, like, the URL to download it. Um, you, you can run make, or there's a bat file on Windows. It builds all the documentation. And um, you've got the HTML locally. Uh, however, you don't always want to build all the documentation, because that takes... I don't know, depends, 30 seconds, a minute? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. So you can, you can do partial builds of chapters, which is quite fast. Um, and we also have, uh, there's plugins for Vim and Sublime, so you can do sort of uh, real-time updates. Yeah, we should also see just the screenshots, but it's a okay. so you can just click on it. And that's the... And the next? Yeah, that is, uh, this is, you say it's like just um, this is uh, um, the first time that the, this new system was used by somebody that wasn't me or Campbell was when Dalai was working on the multi-view uh, documentation, 
And uh, he was like, yeah, but you know, what you see, what you get is important. So there was this, uh, this uh, utility that allows you to hook up uh, the, the Vim editor that many people know, use, and love to uh, actually a, a web browser where you can actually stream the content of the, the Vim in, uh, in the web browser. So even as you scroll up and down in your, in your text editor, the, the web page scrolls up and down. And if you edit, you just see it in real time. So there is no need to rebuild. Uh, uh, your documentation over, you just see it in real time with pictures and everything. And uh, something similar uh, is available also for Sublime. It's not as refined, but it's just a matter of you know uh, finishing hooking up the the theme and uh, uh, the way static images are are uh, uh, available uh, in this in this page. But it's it's very promising because it's very close to the what you see, what you get that people expect to have. Still a bit technical, but pretty manageable. Um, so just to, to start wrapping this up, um, what are the next steps? So I'm going to mention two of them, and then Campbell can close with the third one. That is, uh, we are going to close the uh, uh, doc 2.6 uh, namespace in the wiki. This means that we are going to, uh, for the time being, uh, uh, prevent people from editing the, the current 2.6 uh, documentation and send people over to the new project. So we're going to try to make it more prominent and, and invite people together. Uh, I've been mailing the mailing list. The response has been very warm. And, uh, uh, and yeah, so it, we, we go ahead with this. And uh, that's the second thing I wanted to mention, that it is uh, make a, 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 a platform where people can actually see what's going on. What is the status of this project? How many sections are in the manual that need uh, maintenance? Uh, who is available to just, you know, just read uh, something or uh, contribute with a section or do that kind of stuff? Because we have Fabricator, which is a great system for a collaboration on these type of projects. But uh, uh, we can, you know, we can augment it a little bit and uh, and uh, and serve a different website that really visualizes what, what what we need to do. And this will be done like very soon. Uh, I was hoping to finish it for these days, but I was too busy, so I couldn't. And then the third uh, and the final topic, yeah, yeah uh, will be uh, mentioned by Campbell, and he can probably add those or something because it looks like. Uh, okay. Um, well. So we have the idea of modulators in Blender, and this isn't necessarily just the key developers. There are also, uh, we have user modulators, which we haven't really put in practice as much as we should. But uh, users who know the developers well and they have a, like a, we can trust that they know the software well enough to give us uh, useful feedback. Um, it would be good, and uh, maybe this feels a bit like tricking people into getting into documentation, but it would be good if these user module owners would become responsible for chapters of the manual. Even if they don't necessarily write all the documentation, they at least talk to the developer, make sure the, the key things are, uh, are documented or if they get users to help them, but try and get the documentation a bit more into the whole blended development process as well. And that's what I'd like to see, but we have to all, also agree on that with, other, with the other developers and with, uh, I guess, with Ton. So, yeah. Do we have to, is there anything else or? Yes. <laughs> um, thanks a lot. Uh, unfortunately, there is like basically zero time uh, because we have to keep the schedule that I know. Um, if there are, uh, like we, we would really like yeah, maybe one question, maybe two questions, like, hmm? Yeah, okay, yeah, so a couple of questions. The sir here? Can we share? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Thank you. It seems to me you've missed out the most critical um, point about fixing the online documentation. There's no style guide for authors of your online documentation. Who's going to say how it should be written, how you're going to maintain consistency, what's the minimum standards you require? Without that, I don't see how you can really improve the documentation. You're just taking the old documentation and presenting it in new clothes. That's a good point, and we have actually talked about this. I guess the issue is that we need people to even be using it and building it and telling us that it even works. Like we're, we're, we know this exists and this style guide for all sorts of stuff, like the actual syntax style and stuff, but we, yeah, you, you're totally right, and we were aware of it, but we need people to be using it before we can actually set a direction, because we're not authors either, we're like technical people, so. 
Um, on a side note, there is very basic, just even how the titling is supposed to be, and uh, we try to, we mention, I think, in one place that the cycles documentation is kind of how it should look like, but yes, it's not formalized yet. But this is also a part of the documentation community, which would be nice to, if they kind of formed, to, to start agreeing on this stuff, and, and yeah. Uh, question. Another question? And there is a question there. Uh, got a very easy question. There is uh, in some old documentation about code 2.4 or so, there is some uh, uh, good written information on documentation on features I don't find in the newer versions. How do you, would you explain that? Well, the, the reason why it's not there is because nobody ever bothered copying it over. And uh, in that case, when we did our massive initial migration, that documentation is probably not here either. And uh, I think it would be, if this uh, would be a great example of you shooting us an email and being like, hey, there is this thing that has not been copied. And then you can try for yourself how hard it would be to copy paste two or three pages and put them in the new system. It probably takes you like maybe one hour to figure out everything, and then you have it. So that's a good example of how things could be, yeah. Uh, the one last question there. Would you, would you give an example how I would like to uh, write two and a half pages on a theme, I, on, on something I know, how to do that, how to come in at that, how is controlling me that I'm right, right and not wrong, mm -hmm. and how is that managed? So are you talking uh, on a on the level of getting it set up on your computer and stuff, or writing style? Writing. Like, writing. Like the text and the way the paragraphs are and the sentences and... No, no, not the technical stuff. I, I know something it? about sculpting, maybe. And I want to give that information in the manual. So how do I? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all clear, it's all clear. We and, have this actually, I think. Yes, but besides that, so there is a, there is, if you look this up, um, I know it's not very prominent, so there is an explanation on this, so there is the documentation project page on Fabricator, so this is not the best place, I agree. Um, so we are going to try to make that page more findable, but there is an explanation on how to do that, but especially, especially, there is a BF dash docboard mailing list where we welcome everybody who has no clue on what to do or how to do any question, any feedback, because that's the best place to have this, uh, these discussions. And there I've been always been helping people to uh, get set up uh, before with the old wiki and now with the new system. It's the best way to provide support because then it's also history for people who come next. Okay. So even if there is not a lot of very formal, very clear uh, docs, which I agree should be in place, at least that's a place where you can get help for sure. So. I invite everybody who is actually interested in the project to maybe send a mail there. There are still uh, one and a half days of conference. Uh, so if, if you are interested in this and if you feel like, you know, uh, doing something for this project, which I think is very, very important, just get in touch with me or Campbell. And we are super happy to answer any questions and try to organize this a bit further before the conference ends. And uh, that being said, uh, thank you very much.